Oftentimes I get asked what I do for a living, and for the sake of brevity, I usually respond, I'm a steel worker, because few people really understand or know about what a engraver is, or more specifically, I'm a master firearms engraver. What that means is I work on antique relic type firearms, restore them and decorate them, collectibles and extremely high-end custom sporting arms and embellish them with engraving. The engraving helps connote that these items are of special nature that they are over and above the ordinary type of items that we regularly run into or we think of as what you'd see at Walmart or a gun store or whatever. I was first introduced to engraving as a small child watching my grandfather who was a master engraver in the jewelry trade. He worked for uh, known, uh, highly notable, highly known silversmith company or silver manufacturing company in Baltimore and he created these beautiful pieces of artwork on these objects of uh, silver hollowwares and flatwares and later on in his life he worked for my father in his retail custom jewelry business as an engraver in the jewelry trade. As a youngster I would sit there and watch him do his, art, do, do his artwork on these items. I picked up a lot of things just observing what he did as a kid and like the, the layout of the patterns and the transferring the images from one object to another to replicate them. Uh, many of these things are things that I do on a regular basis today. Uh, that is the, uh, really the start of when I really learned about engraving. And uh, since then, when I was in my 20s, I bought a Smith & Wesson revolver. And as any responsible gun owner does, they go home and they read the owner's manual and any other documentation that... Uh, is in the is in the you know in the box. Well, there happened to be a brochure in there advertising the capabilities of the custom shop in relationship to uh, embellishing firearms with elaborate engraving. I looked at that and I said, "Wow, I'd really like to learn how to do that, and I think I have a good chance of being successful at doing it." So I began trying to figure out how to take my knowledge as a jeweler and as a jewelry engraver and transform it into firearms engraving. There's basically two types of engraving that have existed since the Iron Age. And those two methods are the hammer and chisel and the hand push engraving. Hand push engraving is more or less a jewelry style of engraving where the artist holds a tool in one hand, the object's held in a, a vise, and the, uh, the engraving is executed by rotating the object into the point of the tool. This method produces very beautiful, graceful, cuts, the artist is looking at it with high magnification and is able to impart tremendous amounts of detail and character into the items. The other method is what is typically thought of as gun style engraving that's executed with the hammer and chisel method. In this method, the artist holds a chisel in one hand, a hammer in the other, and successively hammers on the back of that chisel to propel it actually through the steel or through the object to incise lines and carve away material to render the image. This method, the artist is usually working at 
arm's length distance and as you can tell, you can only execute what you can see or what you can observe and see where your hands are, see where the chisel point is, see the detail that you're creating. So it is not necessarily going to give you the highest level of detail. In addition, each one of those hammer blows imparts a specific character to the cut where it creates a chatter or a witness mark in the cuts. This is in converse to everything that I've ever known as a jewelry engraver or, or jeweler, jewelry style engraving. Uh, in a jewelry engraving, the cuts are very smooth, bright, sparkly, uh, very attractive to look at. The hammer and chisel method, you've got these chatter marks in it. It just doesn't quite fit with my uh, version of aesthetic, um, aesthetically pleasing artwork. So, as a jeweler looking to get into firearms engraving, I started trying to figure out how to execute this work in the hard metals of the steel. And that's when I started pursuing the third method, which really has only existed in the last 50 years, and that's pneumatically assisted. In all intents and purposes, it looks exactly like jewelry style engraving, except the tool has a piston inside of it, and it's controlled by a regulated air supply. This gives the artist the ability to execute beautiful, deep, heavy cuts in virtually any metal out there. The system itself works at roughly 1,000 to 10,000 strokes per minute. I don't know of a single person in the world that can hammer anything 10,000 times. <laughs> uh, that advantage right there allows the pneumatically assisted engraving to uh, far exceed anything else that can possibly be done with traditional hand tools. Uh, it's all unguided um, or freehand, as some people might say. Um, and it renders, it's, it allows the artist to focus strictly on the art itself and not so much on the mechanics of the, of the tools and the dexterity issues and things of that nature. Well, shortly after I began this journey, I ended up doing a few of my own personal guns and they turned out pretty nice and I started doing gun shows and uh, regional gun shows, collector type shows and was introduced to other engravers and encouraged to join what's called the Firearms Engravers Guild of America. And this was a critical moment because they encouraged me to go to the exhibition and apply for an Emerging Artist Award and go out there. So I, I did that, I won the award, went to the exhibition, and at the exhibition, a lot of other master firearms engravers said, Bert, your work's really awesome, extremely highly detailed, you should really try to become a certified master firearms engraver. So I thought about it and realized, you know, these guys are the, the top of this field and they're telling me that my work's as good as theirs and that I should try to join the club, so to speak. So I went home and began to go through the process of executing the work necessary to uh, certify. At the same time, my wife was offered a position at a construction project in Colorado. She said, uh, you know, would you like to do this? And I said, yeah, let's, let's go for it. And, you know, she questioned and said, uh, well, what are you going to do for, for a job? You know, you've worked in the family jewelry business for all these years, and that's really all you know. And I said, well, you know, I've been... I think this is the perfect opportunity for me to go for this master engraver and try to become a notable firearms engraver in America. So she believed in me, I believed in her, and off we went to the 
the Wild West. Uh, shortly after arriving there, I finished the work for the master uh, certification, and I passed the first time around. Uh, didn't have to try multiple times. It was one time, um, and I was successful. Shortly after that, I came home, and I started doing a lot of really high-profile uh, commission pieces that really put me on the map with the certification. I had the credibility, and then the word just had to get out that I could do this type of work and that I was, you know, good at it. The first job that really kind of put me on the map was this gun right here, which is a Colt revolver. And that gun actually ended up on the cover of Guns and Ammo. Guns and Ammo is the premier magazine for the firearms trade. It's essentially the equivalent of Cosmo in the fashion world. <laughs> so here I am, I'm on the cover, my work's on the cover of this you know, very prestigious magazine. There's art, an article in there about me and the other folks that were involved in it. Um, basically it was a historical rendition of a gun that was done in the 1880s. The gun itself came from the 1880s. Uh, so again, another antique relic type item that I worked on. This was actually the photograph that was on the cover of that magazine. The other pistol in there was executed by another engraver, but the revolver is what got that gun on the magazine cover. When I did that, the editor of the magazine and the go-between guy that I was dealing with that was the you know, essentially the general contractor on the job. Both of them talked to me and they said, Bert, we cannot believe the amount of detail in this gun. It's over the top. We don't see this really ever. Well, that detail work and the article itself explains how I come from a jewelry background and the jewelry style of engraving, which is extremely highly detailed and detail-oriented. And that's really kind of the, uh, the key element of the work that I do is just the tremendous level of detail, attention to detail, um, and the beautiful, bright, shiny cuts. In this photo, you can see how all the different cuts in the scroll engraving reflect the light and create a beautiful image on the metal. A lot of the other types of projects that I do now are individually commissioned special projects for notable folks. This particular rifle here with this elaborate scene was done for the chief of the Yakima Indian Nation in Washington State to commemorate uh, the treaty between their nation and the United States government. Um, uh, that image in the center with the mountains and the horses and the, the teepees in the background is executed with literally tens of thousands of very, very small cuts, little lines, dots, and dashes, very much equivalent to an Impressionist uh, painting in that you have all of these small dabs or dots of paint rendering the image very much similar to the way this works executed in the steel. This image here shows another thing that I'm very well known for, and that are these, that's these high relief sculpted gold animals, gold inlays. I'll use 24 karat gold, fine silver, platinum, and inlay them into the metal, into the steel. The dogs and the rabbit in that picture specifically are raised above the surface of the steel and have you know, three-dimensionality to them. And then of course the, the little lines are flush with the rest of the surface. Same thing with this buffalo. That gun was made in the uh, 1890s and that customer hired me to 
do that artwork for them. Another colt with high relief gold as well. The background scenery in this particular image here and this doll are typically what are thought of as banknote style engraving. Again, similar to jewelry style. Um, as you can tell, a lot of detail, a lot of time goes into these items. Most of them tend to take several months to start from beginning to end. Uh, sometimes there's restoration work, steel work, things of that nature that goes into getting it ready just to work on. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank someone very special. I couldn't do this if my wife hadn't believed in me. So, thank you. <laughs>